Hallelujah. Welcome, everybody. Wednesday night outlet. I'm excited that you guys are jumping on here tonight. As you guys are jumping on here, please share this live stream. I believe that God is going to touch some lives tonight. I believe God is going to heal some people tonight. I'm very excited. I'm going to be talking about being born again, being set apart and being set on fire for God. I believe that God is wanting to set so many people apart, set them ablaze, set them on fire and send them out to do the work of the Lord. And this is the kind of God that we serve. We don't serve a God that wants us to be complacent. We serve a God that wants to set us on fire and to do the work of the Lord. So tonight as I'm preaching, I believe that God is going to set some people on fire. I believe that God is going to speak to some hearts tonight. I believe that God is going to do some great things in the lives of so many people because people are hungry. People have been sitting. People have been waiting. People have been praying. People have been anticipating and waiting for a move of the Lord. And I believe that God is going to move in some people's lives tonight, that he's going to move in and through their hearts. And we're talking about being born again, being set apart and set on fire for God. This is what God wants us to be. He doesn't want us to be dead, folks. He wants us to be on fire for him. He wants us to be excited for him. He wants us to be his mouthpiece. He wants us to be his hands. He wants us to be his feet. Amen. And that's what we're called to do in this hour, in this day and time. It's no coincidence that you were called for a time such as this. It is no coincidence that you were placed here in 2020 for a time such as this. And God wants to use you exactly where you are. You know, he can use you at, at your home, on your job, you know, wherever you are, whatever the capacity that you're in, God will use you. All you have to do is say, God, use me. And God is looking for people to use on a daily basis. He's looking for those who will go out and do the work of the Lord. He's not looking for those that are going to be complacent, for those that don't want to do anything, for those that just want to sit around and be complacent. No, he's looking for those that are going to be set apart and set on fire for him. So I want to encourage you guys tonight as we get into to the word of God. I'm going to be reading in Ezekiel 36, 26, you know, and that talks about when God will give us a new heart and a new spirit. We're talking about being born again. When God changes our heart, when we become born again, we're no longer the same person that we used to be. We can see throughout the entire canon of scripture, when people had an encounter with Jesus, they were no longer the same. Something had changed about them. Their continents changed. Everything about them changed. They no longer were the same person. The things that they used to do, they didn't, they don't do no more because they had an encounter with Jesus. Just like the Apostle Paul, we see that the Apostle Paul would persecute Christians, but when he had an encounter with Jesus, his life was dramatically changed. He was no longer persecuting Christians. He was a Christian. He was no longer killing Christians. He was saving people in the name of Jesus Christ, and that's what God wants to use us from. He wants to take us from Saul and bring us to Paul. Amen. He wants to take us from that dead life and give us a new life. He wants to take those old things and make them new. I understand that there's many people out there dealing with depression. There's many people out there dealing with suicide. And I just declare that those spirits will be broken off of you tonight. If you're dealing with anxiety, if you're dealing with depression, if you're dealing with anything that's holding you back from experiencing the goodness of God in your life, I believe that God wants to break these things off of you. God wants you wants to bring you into a place of rest. Amen. And I don't mean just sitting around resting. I mean a peace within you, a confidence within you, so you can go forth and do the work of the Lord, so you can know who you are in Christ. God wants to use you in ways like you never imagined before, and I believe that this is the hour that God is raising up his army, that God is raising up end-time soldiers. He's raising up generals to go forth that will not be complacent. See, I believe the ones that God is calling, there's something within them that cannot be remain silent. There's something within them that they just can't stay still. It's the freedom of the Lord. Amen. It's the it's the liberty that God has given us to love people that we never were able to love before. And this is what happens. When I became born again, all the things that I used to do, I didn't want to do no more. Amen. Because I had been changed. The Bible says any man who is in Christ is a new creation. It says old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. And that's what happens when God gives us a new life. We can see in Ezekiel 36, 26, he says, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. He says, I will take out the stony heart and put in a heart of flesh and put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and to do my judgments and keep them. See, this is what God does. He takes us out of a place with things that we used to do, desires we used to have, 
And he puts us into a new place with new desires, with new motives, with new ambitions. And those ambitions are to serve God. See, you have to be hungry for the things of God. You have to want the things of God. Amen. And God is only calling certain people. I understand this might not be for everybody because some people are just comfortable. Some people are just comfortable going to church on Sunday. They're just comfortable hearing a 30 minute message, three songs and going home. I'm not comfortable with that. Amen. God has called us out to not just go to church but to be the church. He has called us out to prophesy and to speak to the dead bones that they may come alive, to lay hands on the sick that they may be recovered, to cast out demons. See, this is what God has called us to do. And he wants to do these things through you. He wants to move through you. He wants to heal through you. Amen. And you say, well, what do I got to do? You just say, God, here I am. Use me. I'm ready. I'm available. Please use me and God will use you. God will use you exactly where you are. See, he's looking for soldiers. He's looking for workers. He's looking for those people that'll go out and be his hands and feet. Just like the apostle Paul said, he said, one man plants and another waters, but God gives the increase. See, as we go out, we plant seeds. You know, we water those seeds. We do the work of the Lord, but it's God who gives the increase. No man can even come to God and first, unless he first draws him to him. So as soldiers... Being equipped with the word of God, we go forth and be led by the spirit of God to do the work of God in our lives. And I want to tell you that you are called for a time such as this. You have a purpose. God has a plan for your life. Don't let nobody put your fire out. Don't let anybody tell you that God cannot use you. Don't let anybody tell you that you're too young, that you're not good enough. Because I want to tell you, if you have the spirit of God, then you are equipped to go forth and to do the work of God. See, God has anointed you for a time such as this to go forth and to evangelize Amen. To speak life to those, to teach people the word of God, whatever God is calling you to do. See, never try to be like someone else. Never look at another man's page and try to be like them. No, you need to be unique. You need to be you. You need to be who God called you to be because there's only one of you and you are unique and God will use you and the attributes he has blessed you with to touch other people's life. See, nobody can be you. There's only one of you and God created you for a divine and specific purpose with the way you look, the way you act, the way you laugh, the way you smile, everything about you God has created for a time such as this and for a purpose. And God loves you and wants to use you in this capacity. You have to realize that. See, you don't need to be a pastor. You don't need to be an evangelist. You don't need to be a deacon. No, you could just be a believer. Amen. This is what God is calling us to. People think that you need to be a pastor to go out and do the work of God. No, you just have to be willing. See, Jesus died for everybody. Jesus died for me as as much as he died for you. He died as much for me as he did for the pastor, see? And I understand about ministry gifts. I understand about the fivefold ministry. I know that God gave men, when Christ ascended, he gave gifts to men to be apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, and teachers. Amen. For the equipping of the saints, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen. To edify and to equip the, the saints. Amen. For the work of ministry. Hallelujah. That's what the ministry gifts are for. But I want to tell you that you can go forth and lay hands on the sick. You can go forth and cast out demons. You can prophesy. Amen. And this is what God wants to do through his church. See, and I think here, a lot of times in America or in churches here in America, we see a watered down version of Christianity. See, we don't see many demons cast out in churches. We don't hear about demons being cast out. You know, we don't see too much of, of all types of all, all types of other things in some churches, not all churches, because there are men and women of God who walk in the anointing and the power of God and fulfill the mandate upon their life and that are not complacent and not scared by what, what people say and talk about them and praise God for the leaders that stand up and walk in the authority as believers because that's what we need. See, God isn't looking for the timid. He's looking for the lions. Amen. He's looking for the lions that'll be bold and go forth and not be dismayed by the looks of men. Come on. God is raising us up in a time that we can no longer remain where we were. We can no longer be complacent of the way we thought and the way we acted. God is calling us to new heights and new levels in the spirit of God. And if you have the spirit of God, you know this to be true. You know God is calling you to something deeper. You 
You know, a lot of you, I feel right now that God is speaking to multiple people on here to, to spend more time in prayer. See, he's saying not just to spend time with me in the morning, but step it up and spend an hour with me at night too. Don't just spend an hour with me in the word during the day, but come on, go that extra mile and go spend another hour with me in the word at night. See, God is trying to put things inside of us because what we put in us is what's going to come out of us. And God wants to give you an anointing to go forth to fulfill the call on your life. Amen. It's not so much about what God wants to do in us. It's about what God wants to do through us to touch other people. Because when God called us, he didn't call us for ourselves. Yes, he called us and saved us. And it's the best gift ever to have salvation. But God did not call us just to stay there. God has called us to use that salvation that we have to go out and to tell other people. It's just like the four lepers that were sitting in the gate in Syria. Amen. In the book of 2 Kings. And they were all leprous. And they said, if we sit here, we are going to die because of the famine. If we just sit here, we're going to die because of the leprosy. But if we go into the camp of the enemies, they may say <clears throat> they may keep us as slaves or they may kill us. Either way, it doesn't matter. We still have a chance. So they went into the camp and God has scared these men out of the camp. And when these leprous men went, they found great riches. They found the spoil and they began to pack their bags with the spoil. And they said, hold on, what we're doing is bad. They said, we can't just keep this for ourselves. We have to go tell somebody. We have to go share this, what we found. He said, because something bad will come upon us. It's the same thing when we receive salvation in our life. We cannot remain quiet. It's something that's shut up in our bones that we have to go out and tell somebody. There's just something ain't right about keeping our salvation to ourselves, We have to get excited. We have to tell our brothers and sisters about the goodness of God because there's people out there that don't know that God wants to set them on fire, that God wants to give them a plan and a purpose. Excuse me if I get excited about the, 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 the spirit of God and the word of God, because you know what? This is what it's about. God has spoken to me and he said, there's a time, I'm telling you, there's a time where people and pastors and leaders are not going to be preparing sermons from pieces of paper anymore, but God is going to mandate them to go to the pulpit and only speak what thus says the Lord. See, he's getting rid of prepared sermons. He's getting rid of prepared speeches and he's bringing up a remnant that will only speak what thus says the Lord, that will walk in the spirit, that will lay hands on the sick. Amen and do the things that he has called us to do. I want to tell you guys to step out in faith like you've never stepped out in faith. This is the hour to trust God like never before. If God is calling you to do something, I want to encourage you to step out and do it. I want to encourage you to step out and to trust God because I want to tell you the same way when the Israelites were carrying the ark across the waters, those waters did not part until they stepped foot in that water. I know that water looked deep. I know it looked impossible possible to pass that sea, but it took faith for them to step into that water. And I want to tell you, if you step into that water, God will part anything that's standing in your way because he has a purpose and he has something for you on the other side of the Jordan. He has something that you need to go do. He has someone that you need to encourage. He has someone you need to heal. He has someone that needs demons cast out of them and he wants to do it through you. People, I want to tell you guys that now is the time to step forth. And that, that scripture that I just said in Ezekiel 36, 26, where God will give us a new heart and a new spirit, he takes out the stony heart. This is the new birth that Jesus was talking about in John chapter 3. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, a man cannot enter into the kingdom unless he is born again. This is the new birth. It's something supernatural that takes place in us that we cannot do ourselves. And if we go down to Ezekiel 36 and verse 33, he says, For thus says the Lord, on the day that I cleanse you from all your iniquities, I will enable you to dwell in the cities and the ruins shall Shall be rebuilt. That just shows you that God has a plan for you to rebuild the ruins. Go into the places that you used to walk around in, the places you used to smoke dope in, the places you used to sell drugs in, the places that you used to strip at. You know, God is calling you back into those places. And he says that you will rebuild the ruins, the places that are beat down. Amen. And they will be rebuilt. And the people that look at you will know that the hand of God has come upon you, that the hand of God has changed you because the life that you used to live, only God could have brought you out of it. Come on. How many of you can 
can testify that you're not who you used to be because you have been born again. When we become born again, we're no longer the same. Everything has changed. Everything has changed in our life, our mindset. I want to tell you, but you have to get into the word of God. You have to renew your mind by the washing of the word. And that's how it all begins. Amen. When I became born again, Jesus came to me in a dream at my house and he set me free of drugs, alcohol, pornography in one night. Amen. And I was filled with the Holy Spirit sitting in my kitchen, reading the book of John chapter 16, when Jesus said, it's to your benefit that I go away because if I do not go away, I cannot send the helper. And when I read that verse, I began to weep and the spirit of God fell upon me in my kitchen. And I began to speak in this language that I never knew before. And I felt a power like I never felt before. I felt a peace, hallelujah, and a river flowing through my belly, out of my mouth. And it was the glory of God. And I've never been the same since. And I want to tell you that God wants to fill you with his spirit. He wants to fill you with his power, with his joy, and give you authority and power over Satan and every demon that has been hindering and stopping you from pursuing the call of God on your life. How many of you know that demons are real and they're trying to stop you? They're trying to they're trying to lie to you. They're trying to persuade you. And they're whispering in your ear, telling you that God ain't real, telling you that being a Christian is fake, that Jesus is weak. I'm going to tell you that those are demons. You have to listen to the spirit of God. And only way to hear the spirit of God is to be filled with the spirit of God and to get into his word. For Jesus said, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. When you read the word of God, you're not reading a petrified book. You're reading something that's actually living, something that's actually powerful, that'll energize, that's moving on your behalf, that's going to and fro and actually effective. You have to know when you speak the word of God, you are speaking faith-filled, living, powerful words out of your mouth and the words will not return to you void. The same way God says to Samuel that he will not let any of his words fall to the ground. You have to know that God will not let your words fall to the ground. You have to know who you are in Christ. You have to know the authority that you have in God. You have to know that you have purpose, that you've been called, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, that you're a royal priesthood, a holy nation brought from darkness into his marvelous light, that you are chosen. You have to know this about yourself. And I want to tell you guys, now is the time to stop being complacent. Now is the time to quit fornicating. Now is the time to repent and turn to the Lord and allow God to use you like you've never been used. Come on. We got to just live righteous. See, the Holy Spirit says his attributes. He is holy. In Romans chapter 1, verse 4, it describes him as the spirit of holiness. He is the spirit of holiness. And if we have the spirit of God, the spirit of holiness within us, he is going to lead us to be holy. Amen. He is going to lead us to live righteously. He is going to lead us to live a life that glorifies Jesus. And when our life glorifies Jesus, that will be the biggest testimony that you ever have. Because I want to tell you that people are watching. When you say you're a Christian, when you say you're a believer, it's more than going to church. Amen. It's believing it's walking in the spirit. It's walking in the power. It's doing what the word of God says you can do. Hallelujah. In Mark chapter 16, he says, these are the signs that will follow those who believe. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. They will cast out demons. Hallelujah. They will raise the dead. Amen. They will speak in new tongues. That's what he's called us to do. But we can't be complacent. We can't worry about lukewarm Christians looking at us and thinking we're crazy. No, God has called us to this. We need to set the bar for Christianity. We need to set the bar as believers. God is raising up an army right now. People think that the church is decreasing because of the pandemic, but God is multiplying his church. He is growing his church through social media. Amen. And people are hearing the word of God and people at home who are depressed, people at our home that are do, dealing with suicide, are dealing with all types of things in their life. And the Spirit of God is speaking through men of God who have been called for a time such as this to expose the works of darkness. And I want to expose expose the works work of darkness tonight and let you know that if you are experiencing thoughts of suicide you could be delivered it's satan see demons do not want you to come into the knowledge of the grace of god and become saved because satan knows once you become saved hallelujah and sealed with the holy spirit you are saved hallelujah see he knows where he's going and he wants to bring you there with him 
But if you call upon the name of the Lord, like it says in the book of Joel, that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, they shall be delivered. You shall be delivered. Quit letting the devil, the devil condemn you. Tell you that you're not good enough, that you're not. None of us are good enough. Amen. That's why Christ came and died for us. That's why Christ came to the cross for us. Amen. The Bible says we could do nothing without him, but with him, all things are possible. So we don't put our trust in ourselves. We put our trust in Jesus. Glory to God. So we see the new birth. Hallelujah. God is going to set people on fire and you're going to see more people saved and set ablaze for Jesus. God is raising up young people like never before to preach his word, to go out into the streets and just do the work of the Lord. Come on. This is a time that we cannot be complacent, but we need to step out in faith and do the work of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So God, once he saves us, he will call us to rebuild the ruined places. And this is what we're called to do. Matthew 11, chapter 28, verse 30 says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. See, everybody who's burdened, everybody who's carrying weight, everybody who's stressed out, Jesus is saying, come on to me. He says those burdens that you have, those things that you are carrying on your shoulders, you were never intended to carry. You were never in intended to carry that weight. The Bible says, hallelujah, that the anointing destroys the yoke. Amen. And that's what the anointing is for, to destroy. It doesn't just break, it destroys. And when something is destroyed, it cannot be put back. It cannot be put back together. And that's what Jesus does when he comes into our life. He destroys the yokes off of us that we may walk in a peace that surpasses all understanding. And he says, take my yoke from my yoke. Hallelujah. And learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come on. God is calling us to take up his yoke, not the yoke of the world. The yoke of the world is meant to weigh you down. The yoke of the world is meant to wear you out. But I want to tell you that God says to take up his yoke for it is easy. Hallelujah. See this thing and this walk that we're in, it should not be burdensome to us. It should bring us great joy when we're serving the Lord because the Lord's yoke is not heavy. It's light. Amen. But God wants us to come to a place of realization of who he is and who we are in him. Colossians 1.17 says he is before all things and in him all things consist. When you put Christ before everything, everything you need is found in him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Talking about being born again, being set apart and set on fire for God. And we can see in the book of Luke in chapter 8 verses 26 through 39 about the demon possessed man that lived in the tombs. Hallelujah. In, in the Gardenas, if I'm pronouncing that right. Hallelujah, which is opposite of Galilee. And this man was tied up. He was tormented. He was locked up, but he broke the chains. He was demon possessed. And when Jesus came over and he stepped out the boat, it says that this demon possessed man came up to Jesus and met him where he was. Come on. I've seen this on multiple occasions. I've seen demon possessed people come up to me and meet me where I was. Hallelujah. And they had been set free and demons have been cast out. See, God will lead you people. Hallelujah. You say, Lord, use me in deliverance. I want to be used as your mighty threshing sledge on the works of darkness. Use me for deliverance. And God will send you people that need to be set free, that the power of God, hallelujah, will come upon you and those demons will be cast out. I've seen it. Glory to God, the same way that this man met Jesus when he stepped out of the boat. But the point that I want to get to about this man that got delivered, when Jesus cast out the demons, he asked them his names. And he says, my name is Legion because we are many. And I want to tell you, when this man was set free, Jesus did not command these demons to go to the abyss, but he permitted them to go into a herd of swine. And the herd of swine ran down the hill into water and the swine drowned. But I want to tell you something. When this man was set free, he was at the feet of Jesus. 
He wanted to go with Jesus. He knew that something had divinely changed and everybody in that town knew that something had happened. Something had changed. He had had an encounter with Jesus. How many of you had an encounter with Jesus where you've never been the same? I want to tell you that Jesus wants to touch your life in a way that you will never be the same. He is saying to quit trying to do things on your own. Quit carrying the burdens and the weight of the world on your own. See, he took me to a place where I had to be broken, where I was on my face, on my knees, on my kitchen floor, crying out to God. See, that's where I had to be. I had to be at my lowest in order to come to a place of humbleness to call upon the name of the Lord. And that day that I called upon the name of the Lord, like many of you will come to a day that you are calling upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And he will give you a new life. He will exchange. Hallelujah. He will give you beauty for ashes. Everything that ever ruins you, everything that ever brought you down, anything that ever tormented you, God will turn that around and give you beauty for the ashes in your life. Just like this man who was tormented by demons, who cut himself, who broke chains and slept in the tomb. See, that's a key thing. Dead people live in tombs. This man was dead, but was brought to life by the power of Jesus. And if you could testify tonight that Jesus has brought you from a place of death into a place of life, go ahead and hit that, hit those hearts, hit those hearts. If Jesus has brought you to a place of restoration. And if you're watching tonight and you're needing Jesus, I'm going to say a prayer at the end of this. I'm going to break spiritual strongholds. I'm going to rebuke Satan. I'm going to bind the spirit of suicide, the spirit of anxiety, the spirit spirit of depression in the name of Jesus. I'm going to say a prayer at the end of this tonight, but I believe that God is going to break some chains. Before when I was in prayer, before I got on this, got on this live tonight, I heard the Lord say he wants to heal some people tonight. I'm going to pray for healing tonight. And I believe that the Lord is going to touch your body. See, the anointing of God is not limited. He is not limited by social media. He will meet you exactly where you are. Amen. The Lord can impart anything that he wants to impart through me to you. Amen. Through this live. And that's the wonderful thing that our God is not limited. Amen. Our God is powerful. Our God is mighty. And that's the God that we serve. So after this demon possessed man got delivered, he sat at the feet of Jesus and he wanted to go with Jesus. But Jesus said, no, you go back and you tell your family, you tell the people what I did for you. See, Jesus would not let him go with him because if he let him go with him, he would not have the impact in which he had on that city. The Bible also says that he went into the Decapolis, which was a region of 12 different cities. And this man, I believe, told everybody what the Lord had done. And I believe that this man had become a great evangelist to testify about the goodness and deliverance power of Jesus Christ. And this is what it's about. When we become born again, God sets us on fire and sets us apart. And he tells us to go forth. The Bible says, as you have freely received, the freely give. So whatever God has freely given you, amen, you need to give to others. Those who have been forgiven much, love much. How much have you been forgiven of? How much have you been delivered of? How much are you loving? Are you keeping the goodness of God to yourself? Are you sharing it with the world? Are you sharing it with your neighbors? Are you loving? Are you giving? Are you serving? See, these are the questions. And this is the heart of a servant that God gives us once we became born again. When he sets us on fire and sets us apart, we can no longer live our own life. He says, hallelujah, to crucify our flesh and to walk in the spirit, that our life is no longer our own, but we've been purchased by the precious blood of Jesus. And that's what you have to know, that we were bought with a price. Hallelujah. We are not our own anymore. And if we walk around thinking that we are our own to live our life however we want to live it, no, that's not what our, we're called for, beloved brothers and sisters. We are called for a time such as this. I want to tell you that our lifespan and our time here is but a vapor. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God endures forever. But I want to tell you that our life is a small span, but eternity is great. If we're complacent, imagine how many people that we are not leading to Christ. Imagine how many people are going to hell when God can use us to lead these people to him. 
Amen. Not that we're saving anybody, but we at least have to make ourselves available to our creator to lead these people to the Lord. And you'll be amazed what God will do through you. You say, God can't use me. Don't ever allow, allow the devil to tell you that God can't use you. God can use you. God loves you. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Everywhere I go and everywhere I preach, I tell the people that God has a wonderful plan for your life because that's what was told to me before I was born again. When my brother brought me a Bible, he says, God has a wonderful plan for your life. And that stuck with me. I never heard nothing like that before. And I want to tell you to encourage others and let them know that God has a purpose. God loves you and God is going to use you in great capacities in this hour in these end times. So you have to know that the man that had the demons was living in the tomb. But when Jesus came, he was set apart. He was set free and he was set on fire for the kingdom of God. And also, if we if we look at uh, what not not Nicodemus, um, he was the short man. I, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. He climbed. Come on, help me out, folks. You know, him. he climbed up Zacchaeus. Praise God. Zacchaeus. He wanted to see Jesus. He heard Jesus was coming and he was a short man and there was a crowd. And I say this all the time. He climbed up in the tree. Amen. And Zacchaeus was known to be a chief sinner in his town. He was a tax collector. Everybody knew him as a sinner. But I want to tell you that he heard about Jesus. How many of you were in your sin, but you heard about Jesus and you decided one day I'm going to call upon the name of Jesus. Come on. How many of you know that Jesus will not judge you? He will come to you if you lay it down. If you come to him, he will not judge you. I came to Jesus with alcohol on my breath and drugs in my system and cried out on my kitchen floor and he didn't rebuke me. He saved me. Glory to God. He delivered me. Glory to God. See, so many people get so religious and say, you got to stop doing this. God can't save you in your condition. God won't deliver you like that. You need to quit smoking. You need to quit drinking. You need to quit sleeping around. Come on. How can you clean a fish before you catch it? Jesus knows the sin that they're in. We need to walk in the authority and the anointing of God and preach the truth of God and let people know that God's power is not limited. You think my God is limited? My God is not limited from delivering a crack addict. My God is not li limited from, from delivering someone who's homeless, drug addicted, huh, you know, out of their mind, possessed by demons. My God will set them free and set them apart and set them on fire for him and use him hallelujah more powerfully than a religious pastor come on god wants to use the people come on he wants to set the people apart and set them on fire and if we start looking at people any less than others people come on we have missed the mark we need to look at everybody as a potential candidate to walk in the power and the anointing of god that's what god is calling us to do they we have to know that god will use everybody we can't think ourselves more highly than we ought like the bible says says we need to be humble humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God and in due time he will exalt you my brothers and sisters we cannot walk around thinking that we're more haughtier more proud more better more righteous than anybody else because we did nothing to receive the salvation that we received hallelujah we received it by grace through faith and not of works lest any man should boast God did it so we couldn't do anything to receive it. He removed all boasting out of the equation and said, you couldn't do nothing to receive this grace. He said, my son paid it all. He went to the cross and he did it all. There's nothing you could do but to receive it by grace through faith in the name of Jesus. And that's how good our God is. But religious men and religious people want to add things on top of it. Say, you got to do this to be saved. You got to do that to be saved. They want to put hurdles for you to jump over. When you, when Jesus just said, call upon the name of the Lord. And if you call upon the name of the Lord by faith, I want to tell you that God will divinely change you. He will give you a new heart and a new spirit. He will set you apart and set you on fire for him. And you won't have a desire to fornicate no more. You won't have a desire to get drunk no more. You won't have a desire to smoke weed no more. Come on, I used to smoke weed, blunts for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. My wife was so fed up with all the weed I was smoking. I'm telling you, 
I, that's just the way I live. But God cleaned me up. I never have a desire to smoke weed no more. He set me free. I'm no longer the same person. The same way that God set me free, he wants to set you free tonight. He wants to set you free of the strongholds and the things that you have been hiding. God wants to heal the things that you've been hiding. He wants to heal the sin that you've been sweeping under the rug. See, you've been carrying weight. You've been carrying sin. And you've been opening doors to demons in your life. But God said, enough is enough. Quit trying to hide the sin under the rug. I see it. He says, give it to me and I will deliver you. I will set you on fire and I will set you free. Come on. God is a good God. He is a God of redemption. He is a God of reconciliation. He is a God that's more than enough. He is the God who loves us. Glory to God. Now is the time, saints, to get right with God. Put all that petty stuff to the side and come to Christ. He loves you. He cares about you. Come on. He wants to deliver Deliver you of anxiety. I know there's people dealing with anxiety and depression. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of anxiety. I rebuke the spirit of depression in the name of Jesus. And I declare that God is going to bring you out a, out of a place of despair, and He's going to bring you into a place of hope. He's going to take you from the valley, and He's going to place you on the mountaintop. And the person that you once thought you were, He is going to give you a revelation and an insight to who He has called you to be in Jesus name. Receive it in Jesus name. We serve an awesome God. Hallelujah. So the same way that Nicodemus, let me get back to back to um, Zacchaeus climbing in the tree, wanted to see Jesus. He heard about Jesus. He heard about Jesus was coming. And as Jesus was, was coming, who did he see? There were so many people all around Jesus, but he saw Zacchaeus up in that tree. He saw Zacchaeus, his heart wanting to know Jesus, wanting to see this Jesus that he was talking about. So when Jesus passed by, he says, Zacchaeus, come down. Today, I have to come in and dine with you. And when Zacchaeus heard that, the word of God says that he climbed down from the tree. He ran up to Jesus and he immediately, he says, Lord, anybody that I've ever wronged, I will repay four times, I believe he said. He will repay everybody. See, something took place that wasn't there before. Before he was a sinner. He was a tax collector who wanted to rob everybody from their money. But all of a sudden, when he had an encounter with Jesus, when Jesus said that I got to come in and dine with you, a divine transformation took place. And that person that he used to be, he no longer was. He all of a sudden wanted to give back the things that he has taken. Come on. And this is what happens when we have an encounter with Jesus. He takes those old things away and he brings brand new things into our life. Brand new hope, brand new joy, brand new love. He'll give you, a, a, he'll make you able to forgive. Come on, there's some people on here maybe tonight that need to forgive. You need to forgive your mother. You need to forgive your sister. You need to forgive your brother of those things that had happened. And I want to tell you that there's freedom in forgiveness. If you forgive them, a weight will come off of your back. See, a lot of people are holding on to unforgiveness and it's weighing you down and it's preventing you from going where God wants to bring you in your life. God says, if you will forgive and you will let these people go, you will receive a breakthrough in your life yourself. See, the Bible says that if, as we have uh, been forgiven, we also have to forgive. See, Jesus has forgiven us of the unfor um, un unimaginable things. So how are we to hold on to unforgiveness of someone else when Jesus has already forgiven us? So forgive that person. Forgive that person in Jesus' name. And we see hallelujah, that you will never be the same when you come to Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. I want to tell you tonight that God wants to bring some new things in your life. He wants to get rid of those old things, those things that are hindering you, those things that are holding you back. In the name of Jesus, God is going to break depression tonight. God is going to break anxiety tonight in the name of Jesus. God is going to do some healing tonight in the name of Jesus. And I believe it. I believe that God is going to do some great things. He's going to destroy the yokes because the anointing destroys the yokes and the anointing is flowing right now. So if this is you tonight, if you deal with anxiety, if you deal with depression, stand in agreement tonight because I'm going to pray for you tonight. Glory to God. And I'm just going to read the scripture, Romans 8, 3. It says, for what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh, 
God did by sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh on the account of sin to condemn sin in the flesh. So he sent his son in the likeness of sin, sinful flesh on the account of sin to condemn sin. So I want to tell you, when we come into Christ, when we receive Christ, Christ became that sin. He condemned sin in his own flesh. Amen. And we have been set free by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's the best gift ever. I'm going to tell you, there's nothing, anything else that you can ever receive more important than salvation. And once you receive your salvation, God wants to set you on fire. He wants to set you apart for him. And he wants to send you forth to do the work of the Lord. I want to encourage you to encourage people wherever you're at. Amen. And you might need some encouraging. There might be some people watching tonight that don't know Jesus. You know, you're not where you want to be with Jesus. That's okay. I want to tell you that tonight you can make a declaration that today you're drawing a line in the sand. Tonight you're drawing a line in the sand that you're not going to go back to those things that are holding you back because God is going to begin to speak to you to those things that you need to repent of, those things that you need to let go of tonight. I believe God is speaking to some of you right now, some things that you've been dealing with. God is going to begin to reveal these things to your heart and he's going to put it, he's going to press it on you to start repenting for these things that you've been doing and draw the line in the sand tonight. Say, Lord, I'm not going past that line no more. I'm not going backwards. I'm moving forward in the things of you. And God is going to begin to release those these things off of you. He's going to break the burdens. He's going to destroy the yokes off of you in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'm just going to begin praying right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke and I bind every spirit of anxiety in the name of Jesus. I bind and rebuke every spirit of depression in the name of Jesus and I loose the blood and I declare that you are being set free from every spirit of anxiety, from every spirit of depression. I bind the spirit of heaviness right now that has been weighing you down in the name of Jesus and I loose the spirit of unity and the bond of peace throughout this place right now, throughout this live stream right now. I loose the power of God and I break every form of witchcraft. I break every generational curse curse in the name of Jesus. And I declare today is the day of liberation. I declare that you are being set free by the hand and by the power of God. Hallelujah. I break and bind the spirit of suicide right now. And I declare that life is rising up within you. I bind every lie of Satan. I take authority over every negative thought and I cast it down and hold it captive until it's obedience to Christ Jesus in Jesus' name. I declare that you have been set apart and set on fire for the things of God this day, that you will never walk again in the same way that you walked in according to disobedience. But tonight, God is putting a new desire in your heart for prayer and for reading his word like never before. I declare that the Lord has given you fresh eyes and fresh vision to walk in the calling in which God has called you to walk in. I declare that he's given you a heart to love as he loves and to forgive as he forgives. And as you surrender and as you lay it down tonight, God is begin releasing these things off of you. He's beginning. Just raise your hands right now where you're at. God is breaking some chains in the name of Jesus. God is releasing you from some things in the name of Jesus. I break and bind every spirit, every demon in the name of Jesus, and I loose the blood of Jesus. For the Lord rebuke you, Satan. You have no authority over the children of God. You have no authority to bind. Hallelujah. You have no authority to keep the believers bound. And I, and I bind you now in the name of by the authority of Jesus Christ. I declare that today is the day of liberation. Just begin to rejoice. Begin to thank the Lord for your breakthrough. Begin to thank the Lord for releasing you from anxiety tonight. Thank the Lord for releasing you, hallelujah, of depression tonight. And I just speak healing right now. Lord God, I just pray for every person on this live tonight. Lord God, and those that will watch it later. Lord God, I speak healing over them. Lord, I declare Matthew 8, 17, that you yourself have taken their infirmities and bore their sickness. I bind every spirit of infirmity in the name and by the authority of Jesus Christ. And I lose the healing power of God upon every person. I lose healing to your knees. I lose healing to your back. I lose healing to your neck. 
in the name of Jesus. I lose healing to your eyes and to your ears and to your fingers, the joints in your knuckles. I lose the healing power of God right now in the name of Jesus. I lose hallelujah, glory to God. I just thank you, Father, for the work that you're doing right now. I thank you for the people that you're touching. I thank you for the life that you're changing, Father. And I thank you, Father God, for every person on this live tonight. Glory to God. God bless you guys. Hallelujah. Thank you for all uh, all the encouragement tonight. Hallelujah. You have to know that God has called you to be set apart, set on fire, and set ablaze for him. God is going to use you like you never imagined. And tonight I believe God did some major things. I believe some pe- I believe some of you laid some stuff down that you've been carrying some things that you've been doing, maybe that you know you shouldn't have done. I believe that you drew a line in the sand tonight and you said, Lord, tonight was the night. Tonight was the night that I was set free and I'm going to walk right before you. Hallelujah, Lord, that I'm going to be faithful to you. I'm going to walk with the spirit of holiness that you placed with inside of me and I'm going to walk in victory because you know what? If God be for you, who could be against you? I just want to tell you that Satan, he's trying to stop you from going where God wants to bring you. You have to know that, that Satan is trying to stop you where God is trying to take you. And how he stops you is by telling you lies. He tells you that you can continue living the life that you're living. You can continue doing the things that you're doing, that it doesn't matter. You know, but I want to tell you that it does matter. God has called you, hallelujah, to be set apart. And that's exactly what he wants you to be. We serve a jealous God who loves you, who cares about you, and has a great purpose for your life. So God bless you guys. I thank you guys for tuning in tonight. I pray you were encouraged. I pray the Lord spoke to you tonight, and I pray that the Lord touched you in Jesus' name. If this video blessed you tonight, go ahead and share it with somebody because somebody needs to hear the word of God. Somebody needs to be touched by the power of God. Somebody has to know that there's a God out there that's real, that has the power to change somebody's life. Come on, if he took me addicted to drugs, alcohol, pornography, grew up in gangs, had a thug mentality since I I was 13 years old all the way until I was 30 years old. And one day I called out to the name of Jesus and Jesus delivered me through a dream. Come on. Nobody could tell me Jesus isn't real. Nobody could tell me that the power of God isn't real. I've seen people healed. I've seen demons cast out. Amen. I've seen miracles happen. Come on. I've seen, I've seen people's lives changed and never, never the same again because of God. Seen people healed of cancer. Come on. Glory to God. This is the kind of God we serve. And he wants us to walk in the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit. And now is the time. He says, come on, where's my Acts believers? Where's my believers that were like in the book of Acts? Come on, that walked in power and authority. Come on. That's what he's looking for, guys. So I love you guys. I encourage you guys. Stay on fire. Stay set apart and set ablaze for Christ. God bless you and good night.